In this video, you will learn how to use arrow functions. I will also show you what the advantages of arrow functions are compared to regular functions. Let's write an ES5 function to sum two numbers. We'll also log an example call with argument 6 and 4. Once we execute our code in Sublime, we can see that the result is correct. We will now rewrite the sum function using the fat arrow syntax. A fat arrow consists of the equal sign and the greater than sign. The fat arrow indicates a transformation from the input arguments on its left hand side to the evaluation of the function body of its right hand side. So that you can see each step of the transformation more easily, let's rename sum to sum2. The final step of the arrow function transformation is to substitute the function body with an expression. This substitution is not always possible, therefore, both forms referenced by sum2 and sum3 are valid. The third form describes a transformation from input arguments to an expression. If a function has only one argument, parentheses are not needed on the left hand side of the fat arrow. Arrow functions describe functions in a compact way. More advantages of arrow functions come with context binding. We will first review context binding in an example where we attempt to animate a ball. The ball has horizontal and vertical coordinates and velocities. This.dt determines the speed of the animation. In this example, we will set it to 25 milliseconds, yielding 40 frames per second as 1000 divided by 25 is 40. We will use set interval to change the position of the ball based on the velocities and console log the changed position of the ball. We will perform these operations every 25 milliseconds. Let's create a ball object and run the code. Hmm. The coordinates are all NANs. How come the coordinates are not numbers? We forgot something. The problem is that the value of this is different inside the setInterval function. Many developers use the self equals this trick to save the external scope and refer to it inside the callback function. We will therefore edit all occurrences of this inside the setInterval and change them to self. Once we execute the code, we can see that the coordinates are now correct. The problem with this solution is that we have to make a conscious effort that we have to use self instead of this. Make just one mistake and you will get a problem that's often hard to debug. Therefore, in ES5, we used context binding in order to allow the usage of this inside the callback function. We will now run the code to make sure that the value of this is correct. After the short summary on context binding, let's revert our changes. We will now substitute the set interval callback with an arrow function. If we run the example, we can see that context binding took place automatically. Whenever you want to use the lexical value of this, coming from outside the scope of the function, use arrow functions. The equivalence transformation of arrow functions looks like this. Given arrow function arguments fat arrow value, the equivalent ES5 construct includes context binding. This is why the ball coordinates were correct in the previous example. Now that you know the fundamentals of arrow functions, I encourage you to solve some arrow function exercises. You can get access to the reference solutions with explanations in the next video.